Number 9. Mount Rushmore's Hall of Records Nearly 3 million people travel to South Dakota's Black Hills every year to catch a glimpse of the iconic faces of Mount Rushmore. The imposing National Memorial features the busts of former U.S. Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Designed by American sculptor Gutzon Borglum, the 60-foot-high busts were chosen to represent America's birth, growth, development, and preservation. Borglum oversaw the project from 1927 until his death in 1941. He planned for the construction of an 80-by-100-foot room behind the faces. He called it the Hall of Records and envisioned it as a storage vault for documents and artifacts that tell the story of America's democratic history. They would be kept in bronze and glass cabinets. According to Borglum's vision, the Grand Hall would have a 20-foot entrance topped by a bronze eagle with a 38-foot wingspan. A 70-foot tunnel was blasted into the mountain behind Abraham Lincoln's hairline, but the government didn't support Borglum's idea and ordered him to get back to work on the memorial's faces. Construction on the Hall of Records ground to a halt in 1939, leaving behind the crude space that remains today. After Borgum's death in 1941, his son Lincoln took over the project, but funding ran out and the work stopped just six months later. The busts were supposed to depict the presidents from the waist up, but as you can see today, the work was left unfinished. Number 8 the Pope's Stone. It took 40 years to build the 555-foot-tall Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. Construction on the imposing obelisk-shaped structure began in 1848, but ground to a halt in 1854 due to a lack of funding. It had been built to a height of 152 feet. The Washington Monument Society continued with its fundraising efforts. Instead of giving money, the state of Alabama offered to provide a decorative stone that could be used in the monument. The idea took off like wildfire, and the society appealed to states, cities, associations, and even foreign countries to contribute a stone. Included among the donors was Pope Pius IX, who gave the society a stone made of marble from Rome's historic Temple of Concord. Most people would be honored to receive a gift from the Pope, even if they're not particularly religious. But the gesture infuriated members of a political group called the American Party, or the Know Nothings who despised immigrants and the Catholic Church. On March 6, 1854, a group of four to ten men rushed up to the night watchman's shack next to the monument and piled heavy rocks against the door to trap him inside. The intruders loaded the Pope's stone onto a cart and disappeared. By the time the watchman reported the incident two hours later, the men were long gone from the site. The guard also had a gun, but had chosen not to defend himself with it. He lost his job, and a $100 reward was offered for the return of the stone. Rumors claimed it was dumped in the Potomac River, but an extensive search failed to turn up any sign of it. Another story claimed it was buried near an intersection, but efforts to dig it up were unsuccessful. Some modern-day Catholics believe that the Know-Nothings shattered the Pope's stone and ground the fragments up with mortar that was used to set the monument's stones. Congress eventually helped fund the completion of the monument, but the fate of the stone remains a mystery. Number 7. The Empire State Building's Secret Observation Deck Visitors to the iconic Empire State Building can pay $44 to go to the 86th floor observatory, or they can pay $79 to access observatories on the 86th and 102nd floors. But most people will never get an opportunity to visit the little-known 103rd floor balcony. Both the 102nd and 103rd floors are located inside the building's 200-foot spire. The view from the 103rd floor is equal parts spectacular and terrifying. Unlike the 86th and 102nd floor, which are equipped with safety features to prevent people from falling, the only thing separating a visitor from a straight drop down is a knee-high ledge with a low railing. Standing room is limited to a tiny platform that doesn't seem like it was meant to accommodate visitors. The open-air terrace was originally meant as a disembarkment spot for airship passengers, but airships never became a popular form of travel, and the landing remained closed to the public. Reaching the balcony requires riding up several elevators, then climbing up a steep staircase that could almost be considered a ladder. Naturally, many celebrities have been to the 103rd floor, but the average Joe might as well forget even trying. The answer is going to be no. Anyway, if you've ever been to the outdoor observatory of a really tall building, then you probably already know how windy it gets, and that a visit to the secret balcony probably isn't for the faint of heart or someone who gets nauseous easily. 
Do you think it would be fun to stand on a narrow landing where it feels like one strong gust might be enough to blow you off the edge? Or does the thought utterly terrify you? Let us know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. The Statue of Liberty's Torch The Statue of Liberty's original torch had a balcony that offered striking views of New York Harbor. It was only open to VIP guests, who had to climb a 40-foot ladder to reach the landing. Sculptor Gutzon Borglum redesigned the frame to have windows in 1916, but they caused the torch to leak when it rained. Later that year, German saboteurs blew up a munitions depot across the water in New Jersey, causing a massive blast that blew out windows in Manhattan. The explosion weakened the Statue of Liberty's torch, and by that point, it seemed like opening it to visitors just wasn't meant to be. In 1984, the original torch was replaced with a replica, but it remained off-limits to visitors. The original torch was housed in the base of the statue until 2018, when it was relocated to a newly built museum nearby. Have you ever discovered a really cool secret space? And if so, were you able to explore it without getting yelled at? Tell me about it in the comments below. But first, be sure to subscribe. Number 5. Brooklyn Bridge Wine Cellars During the construction of the world-famous Brooklyn Bridge in the late 19th century, Chief Engineer Washington Roebling's planned roadway connecting Brooklyn and Manhattan ran straight into a wine company on one side and a liquor store on the other. He made the owners an offer, a new space inside the bridge to run their businesses out of. They both took up on the idea and each moved into one of the bridge's two wine cellars, which were dark, cool, and served their purpose well. The businesses were located within the structures that support the bridge's on-ramps. In addition to allowing Roebling's construction plans to continue without hassle, the rented spaces helped rake in cash to pay off the costs of building the bridge. As America approached the Prohibition era during the late 1910s, however, wine storage was no longer considered an appropriate use of the bridge's chambers. The spaces became newspaper storage for the next 13 years. When Prohibition ended, wine and liquor store owners were allowed to rent out the space again. Sadly, the cellars were closed after World War II for logistic reasons, and they remain closed to the public to this day. Number 4. Lincoln Memorial Undercroft Construction on Washington, D.C.'s Lincoln Memorial began in 1914 on what was once known as the Potomac Flats. Forty years earlier, the area was a tidal wetland where foul-smelling sewage accumulated. In 1870, the Army Corps of Engineers began what would turn out to be a decades-long dredging and landfill project to deepen the nearby canal and fill in the flats. When work began on the Lincoln Monument, crews dug a cavernous 40-foot deep hole. They filled the sprawling 43,800-square-foot space with towering concrete columns, which supported the monument and made it look as if it was perched atop a hill. The memorial was finished in 1922, and the basement, known as the Undercroft, was subsequently forgotten about until 1975, when workers rediscovered it while renovating the bathrooms. Inside, they found stalactite and stalagmite growths, which were created by moisture that had seeped through the marble and into the space. The Undercroft essentially had its own ecosystem, complete with insects and rodents. For a handful of years, the National Park Service hosted tours of the mysterious basement, where graffiti left behind by the original workers is still visible. But the space was closed in 1989 after someone discovered asbestos. In March of 2023, the National Park Service announced that the Undercroft will be turned into a museum dedicated to the monument. Construction is slated to begin in 2023, and the NPS hopes to open the museum by 2026. Number 3. Kilroy Was Here The World War II monument in Washington, D.C. has a lot going on all at once. It has 56 granite pillars to represent the U.S. states and territories, a pair of triumphal arches, which represent the Atlantic and Pacific theaters of the conflict, an oval plaza, a fountain, and landscaping. So it's easy to miss two engraved cartoons of a bald man, along with the words, Kilroy was here. The Kilroy image could be described as a predecessor to the modern meme. There are numerous stories surrounding its origins, and it's unclear which, if any, are true. The drawing nevertheless became a long-running joke among American GIs, who drew Kilroy on walls and other surfaces in places where they were stationed and traveled to during the war. Kilroy made appearances in Japan, the Philippines, France, Italy, and probably elsewhere. 
Rumor has it that someone even drew the image in Joseph Stalin's personal bathroom at the Potsdam Conference, causing him to become confused and paranoid. The Kilroy drawings at the World War II Memorial can be found behind the Golden Gates, next to the Delaware and Pennsylvania pillars. They're not hard to find, but you probably wouldn't notice them unless you were looking for them. Number 2. Vanderbilt Tennis Club As many as 75,000 commuters pass through New York City's Grand Central Terminal every day. Many, if not most, are unaware that there's a hidden recreational facility on the third level, behind the building's famous vaulted windows. The clandestine space was originally an art gallery. In 1966, a Hungarian immigrant named Geza Agazdog turned it into an athletic club. He named it the Vanderbilt Athletic Club in honor of the station's builder, Cornelius Vanderbilt. The facility housed two clay tennis courts and a 65-foot artificial ski slope. Sadly, the club fell into neglect, and by 1980, it had fallen into complete disrepair. In 1984, Donald Trump took over the facility and turned it into a high-end tennis club that charged $155 per hour to play. The facility closed in 2009 to make room for a Metro North employee lounge. A new ceiling was installed, creating a fourth floor, where new tennis courts were built in 2011. The club is open to the public, and those who know about it and manage to find it are welcome to play. It's one of several fascinating things that can be found at Grand Central if you know where to look. In another part of the station, there's a dome called the Whispering Gallery, where you can whisper back and forth with someone from opposite corners of the room and hear each other perfectly, even during rush hour. Number 1. Hidden Mini Monument Many, if not most, visitors to the Washington Monument are unaware that there's a 12-and-a-half-foot mini-monument buried in a nearby manhole just south of the statue. In fact, many walk right over it without even noticing. The object in question isn't actually a mini-monument, although it looks like one. Officially known as Benchmark A, it's called a geodetic control point. National Park Service spokesman Mike Litterst told local station WJLA that surveyors used the scale of the monument to line up their surveys and make sure their readings were correct. And while it's 44 times smaller than the actual monument, and would certainly be considered miniature in comparison, it's not very small at all. While the Washington Monument was being built, Benchmark A sat above ground. Since then, the ground has gotten higher, and it's become concealed and largely forgotten. Unfortunately, if you're going to catch a glimpse of the so-called mini-monument, it probably won't happen. In 2019, the National Park Service unveiled the hidden structure amid ongoing rumors about it. According to Litterst, it had never been shown publicly in modern times. He described it as one of Washington, D.C.'s most fascinating secrets. Thanks for watching! Did you know about any of these secrets before watching this video? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.